Another um, big interest of yours is architecture. And right now you're really killing it with your um, YouTube um, kind of architecture photography vlogs. And I think you've found a very cool niche with that. And uh, maybe if you could just touch a little bit on what your fascination with architecture is and kind of what it means to you. Well, let's start off with this. I was in a library, the same library John and I used to get together in. <laughs> and because I knew there was something missing, like I just naturally was inclined to architecture. There was something missing. I knew there was more to say about it. Mm -hmm. I knew there was something to be explained about what I was feeling internally, but mm -hmm. nothing was written on paper. And I remember just searching, I don't know how I found the book, but I think I was just in the architectural section and I found literally the book that I was looking for, just spot on. The moment I saw it, it just clicked. I was like, this is for me, renting it. And uh, it was called The Architecture of Happiness by uh, Alan de Botton. Mm. And he actually has a really cool YouTube video up on talking about this neighborhood in the Netherlands. Okay. And it's a very engaging, like youth-oriented mm. and like young adult neighborhood. Yeah. But... Yeah, so I started kind of reading up on that and the way he wrote it was really good. He started off with like sculpting, furniture, and then all the way into architectural, mm. like historical styles, um, modern styles, and how contrast, color contrast, shape, yeah. uh, details, all have a representation psychologically. Mm. And also like say the early days before it was more modernized. Yeah all that like sculpting and everything pretty much was to engage religious kind of okay, yeah. ideas and also mm -hmm. purpose of life at the time, like their yeah. philosophies of living mm -hmm. and the sculptures kind of represented that. So it was like, a, it was like an insight and a memory for people to kind of engage mm -hmm. with on the daily commute. Et yeah. yeah. But it, I liked the, the fact that he highlighted the relationship between colors, curves, like patterns mm -hmm. and how it kind of, uh, creates uh, a connection within our own lives. Like maybe yeah. we are suffering some form of darkness mm -hmm. or maybe we are looking to achieve greatness and the scale and volume of a structure is something that we can feel. Yeah. But the textures add more of a personality to define what we're feeling. Hmm. Yeah, so. that's super interesting. You mentioned something in one of your more recent videos where you were admiring some buildings and you said, it's crazy to think like that building's there for us, right? Like, I feel like we kind of might drive through a downtown core of a city and just are like, oh yeah, this, the buildings are nice, da da da. But we forget to really um, remind ourselves that those buildings were literally created for you and I, like the architect was, buildings are created for humans, right? And I feel like mm -hmm. we almost overlook that aspect to it and kind of neglect the sheer, um, just just the utility of the architecture that's all right in front of us it's impressive just to think because it's so it's such a it's such an incredible scale yeah that to, to be even fathom the fact that workers had to yes kind of communally construct this kind of mm -hmm. and especially with all the equipment etc yeah even with the equipment you just don't understand how they would structure it i know it's just it's uh... so exciting yeah, it's, it's really quite mind boggling. And it wasn't until yeah. me living in Calgary that I really started to like look at how these buildings are being built, right? Like in my neighborhood right here, there's an apartment building being built down the road for me and I'm watching how they're creating that one versus this other tower in a different neighborhood that's quite, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's more large scale, right? And just watching the, the subtle nuances and just when you look at the workers, right? They're always just like average people. And it's like, they're creating this phenomenal structure. Like how do they even know what they're doing? It's just, it's so crazy. It's such an amazing feat of yeah. human innovation, you know? Um, uh, to summarize though, my fascination with architecture is pretty much the idealization of a more beautiful city, so to yeah. speak. But obviously we can't fully create that in a sense that we have to um, make sure we preserve history, but also have in mind idealism for future growth. 
And that's why I think a lot of landmark buildings aren't being built currently because we still want to sustain a relationship between our environment instead of like extrapolating. True. It comes down to balance again, right? Mm -hmm. Despite how beautiful it would be with all these patterns and exaggerations, Mm -hmm. it just probably wouldn't be practical for maintaining. It's just so fascinating. And I don't know, I think it's a underappreciated and under talked about subject. Like I said, like most people aren't really considering the architecture around them. People just kind of pass by and I don't know, I feel like they don't discuss it or appreciate it like they really should. That's almost a shame though, because all you really see in the city, like a large city is concrete, a little bit of grass, concrete (laughs) and materials. Like, you know, obviously I'm gifted because Vancouver has a super great balance. Oh yeah, yeah, the balance between nature and concrete. I love in your videos when you do yeah. highlight some mega structure and then maybe there's trees on it or some vine growing up it or you take a nice photo that captures that greenery plus that kind of rude brutalist um, concrete and steel. You know, I just mm-hmm. something about that mix and that yeah. balance of the two is super cool. It's like a imbalance of balance. Yeah. But it's a good relationship for life, I think. 